Welcome to ASAP Recovery, the recovery program for those seeking cure over maintenance. Thank you for joining us today as we take a look at where addiction recovery and the Word of God meet. Here is today's message. I got it up here on the screen. Sorry, it's not exactly fit in perfectly there. Uh, but let me read this to you. Genesis 37, 1 to 11. Now Jacob dwelt in the land where his father was a stranger in the land of Canaan. This is the history of Jacob. Joseph, being 17 years old, was feeding the flock with his brothers, and the lad was with the sons of Bilhah and the sons of Ziphah. I don't know if that's how you pronounce it, but that's how we pronounce it in the great state of Kentucky. Amen, somebody? Uh, his father's wife. And so Joseph brought a bad report of them to his father. Now Israel loved Joseph more than all of his children because he was the son of his old age. Also, he made him a tunic of many colors. But when his brothers saw that their father loved him more than all of his brothers, they hated him and could not even speak peaceably to him. Uh, now, Joseph had a dream. And he told it to his brothers, and they hated him even more. So he said to them, please, hear this dream which I have dreamed. There we were, binding sheaves in the field. Then behold, my sheaf arose also and stood upright. And indeed, your sheaf stood all around and bowed down to my sheaf. And his brother said to him, now listen, sometimes somebody will come up and tell you a dream, and you're like, that's just weird. Then other times you're like, there's definitely something going on there, you know. This is one of those deals, like, this is obvious, dude, you know. And so his brother said to him, shall you indeed reign over us, or shall you indeed have dominion over us? So they hated him even more for his dreams and for his words. Then... He dreamed still another dream. You see his dream expanding there. And he told it to his brothers and said, Look, I dreamed another dream. And this time the sun, the moon, and the eleven stars bowed down to me. Uh, so he told it to his father and his brothers. And his father rebuked him and said to him, What is this dream that you dream? Shall your mother and I and your brothers indeed come and bow down to the earth before you? And his brothers envied him. But his father kept the matter in mind. Lord, I just pray that you would, you would just ignite your word in our hearts. When God gives you a dream, and what we're looking at today is how do I know if it's from him? How do I know if it's from me? How do I know if it's the world, the flesh, the devil? Uh, we're going to look at Joseph's story here, and then I'm going to tell you a little story of my own about a dream that God gave me. Uh, one of the ways that I've learned to tell when God gives you a dream, when God gives you a dream... Uh, not everyone's ready to hear it. Amen, somebody? When God gives you a dream, not everyone is ready to hear it. Uh, Joseph's brothers, they didn't have time for that. Ain't nobody got time for that, you know? They're like, what is this? You think we're going to bow down and worship you? He, he had a dream, and they just weren't trying to hear it. The world, they represent the world in this. They just, they, they, they weren't ready for it. Uh, in 2012, in 2012... Uh, I got out of rehab in, in January 2009. Somewhere around 2012, I was driving down the road in Ludlow, Kentucky. And uh, when I did that, um, the Holy Spirit whispered to me, would you build me a church? Just in my spirit, just as plain as day, would you build me a church? This question instantly brought me to tears because I knew what the Lord was asking. And I said, where, Lord? He said, Covington, Kentucky. And I saw this vision, not like a vision like Ezekiel or something. I just I saw this picture in my mind of a bunch of guys I knew in recovery. And we were all standing arm in arm, kind of like a wall around this church and around this city. You know, a recovery, an addiction recovery church. Man, guys in recovery, we don't like going to church, but we'll go to AA meetings and NA meetings right now. But a church for those in recovery is just what he, what he saw me. And so I started telling people about that. I was telling my dad and my family, you know, and uh, friends. And they wasn't like Joseph's family. They wasn't trying to hear that. They're like, you know, well, no, you, you know, you're a felon. Felons can't be pastors, you know. Hello. <laughs> Here we are. You know, Us Nazarenes, we'll let anybody in. I ain't going to lie to you. I'm just, you know, same thing as God's Bible school. They'll take anybody, you know. They took me too. But with that man, they're like, well, you don't know where we're, where, you know, they're, they're not going to have you be a pastor, and you can't do this, and you can't do that, and uh, you used to be this alcoholic guy, you used to be that guy. And let me tell you this, when, when God gives you a dream, not everyone's ready to hear it. A lot of times people will point to your past. And uh, over the years, I got to notice that it really hurt, you know, people like, you know, well, you did this, you did this, you did this. And one day the Holy Spirit said, I've done what you say I've done, but I'm not who you say I am. 
Amen. A lot of times people like to blur the line between your past and your present. Amen. They, they diminish who you are and who you become in Christ because the Bible says if anyone is in Christ, he or she is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. And so I notice the longer I do this, the longer I do this, the more they got to point to my past because they ain't finding nothing in the present. Amen, somebody. And so the longer you're walking with Jesus, it'll be the same for you. But I tried to tell people about this, and they wasn't here. They're like, man, Chuck Chapman's done lost his mind. Thinks God's talking to him. He's going to build a church in Covington. I'm like, I'm telling you, it's going to happen. So from that day to this day, I've been preparing. I had a preacher, a friend of mine at, at the church I was at at the time. He said, a call to preach is a call to prepare. Uh, so I started reading everything I could get my hands on. I've read hundreds of books. I've watched thousands of YouTube sermons. I volunteered at behavioral centers. I volunteered at uh, rehabs. I volunteered at the Kentucky Jail Ministry. Uh, I've come along other organizations already doing stuff and volunteered. I mean, you know, tons of hours. I've been an inner city youth pastor, an outreach pastor, uh, all these different things just so I could stick my head behind the veil for the day when the Lord would say to me, arise and build. And so the Lord said to me, would you build me a church? And, uh, I'll be honest with you, I'm a pastor, I'm supposed to know certain things, you know, like when Pentecost is, and I didn't know today was Pentecost. Uh, you know, we're not in a typical church, we, we, we travel around a lot, so stuff gets lost, and I'm getting old too, you know, so I forget things sometimes. Uh, but I find it funny that uh, the Lord's, my dream is to build a church, and I'm talking to you today, of all days, on Pentecost Sunday, on Pentecost Sunday is when the first church was built. Amen. And now here the Lord's got me talking to you about another church being built. Amen. So that's your Pentecost connection for the day. That one's free. The next one will cost. Yeah. But at the same time, and, and then the more we, we drew close to today and the time to give this message, the Lord's like, well, wait a second, son. We're not done yet. There's layers to this thing. Like I said, you guys are in the process of building the church. Amen. Even though you, you Bruce, you have long, rich history in this church, your, your identity is has changed now with this thing going on in the Methodist thing. And so you guys are also in the process of building a church. And so I think the Lord's got something for you in this today. So you might want to pay attention. No sleeping today. And also, i got a laser pointer here if anybody wants to get out of line here. I'll zap you in the eyeball right there. So when God, when, would you build me a church? When God gives you a dream, not everyone's ready to hear it. Another thing I've learned about, a, you know, God giving you a dream and faith in becoming reality. When God gives you a dream... Sometimes even Christians will have trouble seeing that dream. Your fellow brothers who should have the heart and mind of Christ. Amen. We're all, on a, we're all going to the same location, but we're all on a different track. Amen, somebody? And sometimes some of us are further along, or sometimes some of us haven't been putting in the work and building the relationship with God to be tuned into what the Spirit of God says on these things. But man, I, God's given me this dream, and there's been time when my fellow Christians weren't ready for it. Joseph had the same thing. He went and told his dad. He said, Dad, I've had this dream with the sun and the moon and the stars. He's like, what, are me and your mom going to bow down and worship you too? If you remember, uh, Joseph's dad, Jacob, was a dreamer too. Is he not the one that had the dream about the angels at Bethel descending Jacob's ladder? I mean, his dad was a dreamer too. But sometimes God's going to give you a dream. And you're going to try to tell it to people and they're not going to be ready for it. Uh, I've, I've helped out of lots of organizations. I've served in lots of organizations. And I've, I've, I'm real big on, you know, all authority comes from God. Those in positions of authority have been placed here by God. Rebel against them is rebel against what God's instituted. Romans 13, 1, 2, and 3. Uh, the rehab I was in taught me that. So, man, I've always been a big on being an armor bearer for my pastor, you know, and helping holding up my Moses' arms. And so I've come to my leaders, and a lot of times my leaders haven't been ready for this. I'm like, listen, God's, God's called me to do this. Uh, in my particular denomination, I remember in 2014... We went to a DCPI uh, church plant. We were going to a church plant, and we're like, we want people to plant churches. So I'm like, well, great, because I got that in 2012. Would you build me a church in 2014? Hey, this is a church plant workshop. I'd like to build a church. That was 2014. Still hasn't happened. You know, still hasn't happened for years. Years went by. And so, like, I'm telling this dream, hey, listen, I see this dream where we got a church. And in this, I, friends, I could, I, could, I could go on today. You think uh, Asbury went long on their revival? I could start talking about this dream the Lord's given me, and we'd still be talking about it. We'd go longer than Asbury did. And I'm not going to do that to you because I like you guys, you know. But, man, it's a church, and in that church, there's, a, there's an addiction recovery residential program in that church. And I want people on the NAS, and, 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 and 
I don't, I'm a Nazarene church. I am in full agreement with the Nazarene beliefs. But uh, the problem is, when it comes to drugs and alcohol, it's not a Nazarene epidemic. Amen, somebody? Uh, it's, a, it's a Methodist problem. It's a Pentecostal problem. It's an Assemblies of God problem. It's, it's even a Catholic problem. Addiction is in every church, every city, every denomination, and every family. Someone knows it. So we're not big on drawing the denominational lines in the sand of this, this dream the Lord's given to me. We're going to come lay down our beliefs, cross the lines, and just come together and help people. But I want a program in that church. There's going to be a program in that church. And send us your hurt. Send us like, like the, the young man we talked about earlier and we prayed for. You send us him. We'll disciple him for six months in this place. And then we're going to send him back to you to be a servant, to be an armor bearer in your church. Right? And so I, I, I've shared this dream, but a lot of times... Even the church, well, money this or this, that, you know, and just a lot of times, sometimes even Christians will have some trouble seeing the dream that God has given you, and again, it's an individual dream. Uh, sometimes it becomes a corporate thing. Uh, third thing, how do you know if it's a man-made dream versus a God dream? Uh, when God gives you a dream, sometimes the dream tarries. Amen? Uh, I got this thing where God tells me something I think he means next week. Amen, somebody? Lord told me where I was going to meet my future wife a year before I ever laid eyes on her. He said, you're going to meet her among this community, and I'm thinking next week, so man, I'm showing up old damper Dan, you know, and just suited up, polyester suit, you know, and she's not there. A year later, though, there it was, just like he said. And so, but when God gives you a dream, sometimes it tarries. Like as I said, a call to preach is a call to prepare. Uh, and so he's got to get you ready for that. A lot of times he'll let you in on it, you know, but he's got to start working on you, man. Uh, Sanct I call I don't know if what you guys call sanctification here, but I call sanctification the sandpaper of self-centeredness. Amen, somebody? What does sandpaper do? Start sanding off them rough edges, man, and so God's got to sanctify you and start sanding off them rough, rough edges and get you ready for the dream. And so sometimes the dream carries. For Joseph, it took, he was 17 years old when he got this dream, but 13 years later. 13 years later, the man's dream finally came to pass where, you know, his brothers are there bowing down for him, asking for grain. His dad's later on coming down, bowing for him. Uh, he, had to go, he had to go through the ringer to get to this dream. Uh, for me, uh, January, February, March 2012, I'm driving down the road. Would you build me a church? Here I am 10 years later. 10 years later, still waiting on my dream, still waiting on my dream for it. But I just, I know that I know that I know what I heard. Amen? And so I've been building, I've been preparing. You know, when it comes to skyscrapers, uh, they, had, they had one down in Florida in, the, in this area, and a fence went up, a fence went up, and like, you know, people were waiting for the, the skyscraper to go up, like, when's it going to start building up over that fence line? But then uh, a friend of mine, he, he, he got down uh, up in, a, in another skyscraper, and he looked down, and he could see over the fence because they had everything blocked off, and they were digging down. Amen? That's how skyscrapers are built. You've got to dig down before you can give up. And so when God gives you a dream, sometimes it tarries because you've got to dig down into the roots of your spirit before you can get up to hold all that weight when the storms of life come. And so sometimes the dream tarries. For Joseph, 13 years. For me, it's, 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 it's been 10 years. Uh, another way to tell, is this God? Is this me? Is this the pizza I ate last night? When God gives you a dream, keeping the dream in mind is what gets us through the hard times. Amen, somebody? When God gives you a dream, keeping the dream in mind is what gets us through the hard times. Look at Joseph. Uh, he had this dream. Next thing you know, his brothers are like, let's kill him. And they, throw, they throw him in a pit, you know. And so, man, you know, he's in, he's in that pit, you know. And, uh, you know, but he got through. He's in slavery, man. He's in slavery. He's got things going for him. And then he's, then he's, uh, then he's in jail. The butler, the baker, they forget about him, you know, and all these different things. And so, man, this guy's going through some really hard times. Uh, anybody here ever been to jail? Anybody here ever been arrested? Be honest, you're in church. I asked, you can't lie. So you got to say, uh, guess what? I have multiple times. And it's really easy to get negative in there. Man, they never feed you good, number one. They feed you just enough to get by. Uh, man, you're always hungry in there. And then the stuff they feed you is garbage. It's, it's not good, you know. Uh, and so it's really easy to get negative in there or just to focus on, well, so-and-so's outside these walls. And there's about a thousand ways for the enemy to come in there and start whispering in here. Well, so-and-so did this. So-and-so's doing that. And, but not Joseph. Not Joseph, man. Having that dream is what kept him through those hard times. Man, he's, he's all serving people in jail. He's doing this. He's doing that, you know. And so keeping the dream in mind is what, what gets us through the hard times. Uh, and, and 10 years of this, and really, I mean, technically... Uh, it's been 10 years since he said, would you build me a church? But man, that, that, that dream came in increments. And uh, I knew I was called to preach. 
in 2007. He showed me that in jail. And so Team Challenge of uh, Southwest Florida is where I began to prepare for it in 2008. And then 2009 there, 2008, I knew that there was to be a, I was to be a uh, program director, residential program in this church. And so with that, uh, depending on how you look at it, my, this dream's been, uh, you know, uh, 10 years to, to 15 years for me, depending on with, where, where we technically say it starts. But I'll, I'll be generous and say 10 years. And there's been some ups and downs during those 10 years. Amen, somebody? Uh, man, the thing about, you, you know, here in a church, you might lose a member or two, and here they popped up on another church, or they stopped, stopped going someplace. When I lose a member, being an addiction recovery pastor, we lose them to the grave. You know? I've lost some really good people over the time. I've lost some really bad people over the time, and they both hurt. Uh, also, I often say that working with people in recovery, addiction recovery, it's like trying to hug a cactus. Amen, somebody? It's like, but hug, hug it nonetheless. You must hug that because that cactus needs hug. And they don't even know it. And so, man, they uh, it's like feeding the mouth that bites you. And uh, with that, uh, man, I, these people I'm trying to help, and the Holy Spirit will give me something like, hey, this brother or sister's got a chink in their armor, and I don't get any joy out of going and saying, tighten up, you know, get your game together, what's the matter with you? But i got to go to them and, and this and that. And then usually what, what does an offended brother or sister do? You know, the wall goes up and arrows start flying over at you. Well, you this, and you that, and you this, and you that. And man, uh, I was really going through it. I had a bunch of people in recovery. I'm like, pastor, I'm talking to my pastor. I'm like, this one's doing this, and this one's doing that. And these two were doing it together, and this and that. He's like, you're lucky. I'm like, what are you talking about? And he's like, hey, at least in your line of ministry, the, uh, the defiance is much more blatant or high-handed. You know, he's like, in my line of ministry, it's much more subtle among church people. I'm like, you know what? My life just got a lot better. At least I'm not Pastor So-and-so. He's got a rough, man. For, pray for that man, you know? But with that, man, the blows come, and they come frequently. And, and usually with me, it's funny, because, um, you know, like, I'll take a hit, I'll take a hit, I'll take a hit, take a hit. And then it'll be the little straw that breaks the camel's back, you know? And I've got my own recovery issues. I've got, I got some deep childhood issues of abandonment and rejection, you know? And with that, you know, so, and usually when people get offended in recovery, what do they do? They reject you, and then they abandon you. I said to the Lord one day, I'm like, Lord, you put me in a line of ministry where i got to deal with these issues all day long. He's like, I'm getting you strong, son. But with that, I'll get these hits and these hits, and then it'll be something insignificant, and it'll all just flood me. And then it just takes me out. You know, I just go down like a sack of potatoes. I'm laid in bed, you know, watching TV, checking out, and there's Lisa's there, my wife, to pick up the pieces. Who ministers to the minister? Let me ask you that. You ever think about that? Who ministers to the minister? That's my minister right there. You know, and I'm hers, and so it works out well. But man, uh, I've had a dream, and, and, and I've had these people rebel against us, and, 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 and the kindness and the goodness to them. We've paid their rent. We've got them out of jail. We went down to London, Kentucky to pick them up, and you know, only for them to get livy with you, and, and this and that. But God's given me a dream, and I can see it. I can see it just as clearly as I'm seeing you with my mind's eye, and I can see it. And no matter what they throw at me, I get back up. And I try again, I get back up, and I try again, I get back up, and I try again. Uh, I've lost people, I've had blamers. Uh, also, um, so the pastor said to me, a call to preach is a call to, um, a call to preach is a call to um, prepare. I would also add that a call to preach is a call to poverty. You don't, you don't do this for the money. Amen? Uh, I mean, I've had job. I've, I've, I've been full-time in the church for two years unemployed at one place, 100 bucks a week for two years in another place. Uh, and then another additional two years stent. I've been unemployed for the last two years, you know. Uh, but I got my sugar mama Lisa there. She's got a full-time job. That helps out, you know. Young man, when you get older, you, you're going to want to get you a sugar mama. We'll talk about that after the service. But uh, I digress. Hey, uh, when God gives you a dream, keep it in mind what gets you through these hard times. There's, there, there's a promised land. Uh, when God gives you a dream, I'm going to speed it up now. Uh, when God gives you a dream, the dream helps us to sift everything else in life through. When God gives you a dream, it helps us to sift everything else in life through. Uh, Joseph had Potiphar's wife. Amen. She's like, hey, lie with me, lie with me, lie with me. And he's like, no, I can't sin against God like this. I can't, I can't do that, you know. And, and uh, you know, the, the baker forgetting about him. His brother's throwing him in the thing, you know. And just all these things. It's just like, man, I can't, I can't do this because God has called me to do this. When God gives you a dream, it helps you to make a cost versus value in that. Amen, somebody? Uh, for me, I've had lots of false ministry uh, uh, false ministry opportunities. People come up and say, I have some good, some bad. Uh, I had some, uh, a church, they, they were in a time of transition, and they asked me to speak 
and I was an interim pastor, and they said, and I came in there, the Lord gave me a very specific message. Thus saith the Lord, settle down, get comfortable, build houses, you're going to be here a while, don't jump at the first pastor that comes along in this pastor search. God wants to do something at you, so what did they do? They jumped at the first pastor that came along, me. They offered me the job, they're like, oh, we just think this guy's great, we want to, and I don't know what they were talking about, but they, that's what they thought, you know. And they said, oh, we, we'd like to give this guy the job. And, I, and, and I'm like, Did you? I was like, no, I'm not taking the job. You didn't even listen to my first sermon. Don't jump at the first guy. You're not gonna listen. I'm not the guy for you. But with that, false ministry opportunities and also helping the way and sift through. In 2019, the Lord started talking to us about an open door. Started talking to us about an open door. In 2020, I felt like I was supposed to resign my paid position at the church. Finally make an income as a pastor. I was supposed to resign my paid position, finish the addiction recovery book I've been writing for the last five and a half years to help my brothers and sisters, and to step out into the unknown and go to church. And that whole year, uh, the Lord kept giving me Hebrews 11.8. Hebrews 11.8. Uh, by faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to the place which he would receive as an inheritance, and he went out not knowing where he was going. Friends, this is not a popular verse. I could not outrun this verse to save my life. It was everywhere. It was in sermons. Uh, Oswald Chambers, utmost for his highest. Uh, I think I even saw it on a cereal box one morning. You know, I'm there doing my, my, my Cheerios, you know. And, uh, and just, man, just the Lord kept using this verse to say, I want you to resign. I want you to step out. I want you to do this. And so uh, I convinced Lisa of that in 2020. And now listen, we all know what 2020 was, COVID. Not a good time to be quitting a job if you're lucky enough to hold on to one, but the Lord said so. So in 2021, we... Uh, we uh, put in our resignation at the church in April on uh, a Sunday of uh, 2021. We, uh, it was my last Sunday. We set out, and by December of that year, uh, I finished writing the addiction recovery book that the Lord gave me. Uh, there's actually a copy of it back there on that bottom shelf that belongs to Dr. Burke if somebody would like it. Uh, shortly thereafter, uh, September the following year of September of 2022, uh, we formalized and uh, started a 501c3 nonprofit in the state of Kentucky with our ASAP recovery program. I don't know if you guys know the guy in the blue shirt there, but that he's a Methodist, Richard Miles, good friend of mine. And uh, so yeah, we and uh, also uh, Kristen Bird's on our board, but she wasn't she wasn't uh, there at the time. And uh, that was uh, October of um, 2022. In November of 2022. The Lord, and, and so we got two different things. We got this ASAP recovery program, but then there's Recovery Community Church, and that's when the Lord gave us a name, Recovery Community Church, for our church in Covington. And uh, it, we're going to keep the focus on three things. Jesus, freedom, truth. Jesus is the way, the truth, the life. He who the Son sets free is free indeed, and so the whole thing overlaps there. And so uh, right about the first of the year, 2023 year, the Lord gave me a follow-up verse. Uh, Hebrews 11, 9, he said, By faith he dwelt in the land of promise, as in a foreign country, dwelling in tents with Isaac and Jacob and the heirs of him with the same promise. The word tents just started coming up. Tents, 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 tents. And so I was like, Lisa, I don't know what's going on, but uh, I just feel like, you know, we're traveling around on Sundays, and tents are portable. Tents give you shelter, but they're not your home. Um, you know, and so 2023 is to be our year or season of dwelling in tents. And so, uh, and also about that time, I, the Lord said to me in 2012, would you build me a church? For some reason, I could have started walking the streets of Covington in 2012. And, um, but I just, for some reason, I did not feel like I was allowed to do so until 2023. There was a season of preparation, a season of, of getting ready. But in 2023, I felt him say, arise and build. Arise and build. And so we started walking the streets, finding out what other cross and denominational lines, finding out what people were doing and coming alongside them and just helping remove mental, emotional, spiritual, and even demonic roadblocks. And we started hanging out over here and hanging out over there, speaking when we were called to do so. Dr. Bird had us here a couple times. You know, you guys remember that? And so 2023 has been our year of dwelling in tents. And I was like, you know, I feel like we're supposed to get like a tent, like an actual, like the old, old holiness tent revivals, you know? And so I can't afford one of those tents, so I got me a 10 by 10. Uh, canopy tent, and here in the last couple of months, um, I just felt something inside of me saying, uh, start making, hit the gas, not the brakes. And I'm drawing this too close, I know we're a couple minutes over, but you guys gave me the mic link, that's on you, that's on you. Uh, so, it was, um, what was my last one? When God gives you a dream, the dream helps us to sift everything in life through. This has not been an easy call. It's not a popular call. We're probably not going to see a lot of ministry people led to the Lord saved. I mean, most of the people we're dealing with are homeless, follow-ups, hard, and stuff like that. But just like that video we watched before, 
It doesn't matter if you win 40,000 to the Lord over here if God's called you to win two over here. Amen, somebody? So we've been dwelling in tents, and uh, last year when God gives you a dream, the dream often has to die multiple times before it can be born of God. Amen? The dream oftentimes has to die multiple times before it can be born of God. This happened for Joseph. He's in the pit. His brothers are about to get him out. He's like, oh, great, you guys got me, you guys got me. And they're like, no, let's sell him into slavery. They sell him into slavery. He gets down there. Things are looking up. Okay, you're going to be second in command at Potiphar's house because everything you touch turns to gold. Okay, Potiphar's wife says, you're, you're a rapist. You know, you're going to prison. And not just like our prisons today, like nasty, dirty cave prison back then. And so finally, you know, the butler, oh, this guy's got, got, the, got the pharaoh on the main line. He's got him on speed dial. Hey, remember me, you know, that I interpreted this dream for you. And the butler forgets, for, or it might have been the butler or the baker. Or the cup, I forget which. I get this confused. Either way, they forgot him for two years. Two years. He's down there in prison. He could have got bitter. He did it. Uh, his dream, he had this dream that one day the sun and the moon and the she's are all going to bow down and worship. And so this guy's died, dream died multiple times until the day it came to pass. Sometimes when God gives you a dream, the dream often has to die multiple times before it can be born of God. My dream of would you build me a church, this is what I come here to tell you, my dream of would you build me a church has had to die multiple times. I thought it was over here, I thought it was over there, I thought it was in this building, I thought it was in that building. My dream has died so many times uh, that I lost count. That is until last week when I got a phone call from the district superintendent of the Church of the Nazarene. And he says, we want to recognize you at District Assembly as a Church of the Nazarene. And so as of last, two weeks ago, two weeks ago, uh, we got the call. And as of two weeks ago, our faith left the realm of faith and walked into reality. And now we are officially Recovery Community Church of the Nazarene. Amen, somebody? We are a place where Jesus is king. We are a place of freedom. We are a place of truth. Tony Evans said, uh, faith is acting like it's so, even when it's not so, in order that it might be so, simply because God said so. That's what faith is. And so we got this little tent. Something, I, just something for the last couple months. We said, hit the gas, not the brakes. So I've been, you know, we got some operational funds. Uh, finally, and so we bought a tent. We bought this really cool banner. I had this idea for this banner, and we, we put it up under the tent. It says, do you need prayer? Do you need help? And do you need encouragement? You have no idea what this simple little banner has done. We set this tent up in Global Park in Covington, Kentucky, Mainstrasse, and for four hours, four hours, people come by, they saw that banner, and they're like, I'd like prayer. I'd like help. And people would come under our tent. we got chairs, and they just come in, and they sit down, and they just lay their soul bare, just completely bare, tell us their most innermost secrets and thoughts for, to complete strangers, me and Lisa. And not one person that entered that tent left there with dry eyes. Four hours. Four hours, because we spent the last 12 years preparing. We got this little toolbox. I'll show you some more of this cool stuff. We started a church for like less than a thousand bucks. It was kind of neat. Uh, I got this toolbox. We got some free Bibles. We got these little blessing bags. We got this prayer list thing. And so I got people praying for these people. I'm like, hey, sign your name right here. What would you like prayer and encouragement for or help, you know? Uh, here's some of our new friends down there at Global Park. Uh, the lady in the center, with my wife Lisa there, the lady in the center, her name's Jenny. She gave her heart to the Lord. Three people gave their heart to the Lord on our first Thursday night out. We meet on Fridays, not Sundays. There's Lisa under the tent talking to a friend of ours named Renee. Renee's just kind of stuck in a rut and doesn't see much point. It's funny because I told the district and superintendent, I'm like, listen, we got no building, we got no money, we got no staff, and if you've ever heard me sing, we definitely got no worship team. Amen, somebody? But then the Lord provided us a worship team with uh, Darla there. This little girl comes up. She's like, can I sing? I'm like, well, what song do you know? She's like, I know the butterfly song. I'm like, I don't know what that is, but Let's pull it up, and it's a Jesus song, and she knew all the words, and so we're having worship in the park there, man, and uh, there's Keith up there, and uh, he gave his heart to the Lord, and, uh, and then we had some pizza, and uh, just, a, just a great time of refreshing, and, and, and just what, what a wonderful move of God, and we're doing this every week now, and our tent moves, tents are portable, so this week we're going to go to the park, next week we're going to try a little spot over on Madison Avenue, we're just going to pop up in the community, we're hoping to have a building come November, uh, but that's us, and so one question. And then I'm going to turn you guys loose. Uh, has God given you a dream? Has God given you a dream? Amen? 
Maybe, uh, maybe your dream's reaching the lost. Maybe it's leaving a small group. Maybe it's going back to school. Uh, maybe it's missions. Maybe it's getting married. Maybe it's being a YouTube star. Any of you two on that action? I'm pretty big on YouTube. You don't know this about me? I'm, not gonna, I'm kind of a big deal. It's, it's no big deal. People, I mean, people know me. You know? I'm just playing. I got, I got like two followers. No, I'm just <laughs> But with that, uh, maybe, it's, maybe it's a loved one, a friend, a saved one. Man, I had this guy named James Brooks and his wife Amanda. I was praying for them for 15 years. 15 years I'm chasing this guy, trying to lead him to Jesus. This guy used to be my drug dealer. Back in the day, the last 15 years, I've been dealing him Jesus. Hey, man, here a couple years ago, the uh, Lord got a hold of him. Uh, there it is. There it is. And so with that, um, I got more, but I'm going to call it. I want to say this. The older you get, life has a way of taking the dreamer out of you. Amen? The older you get, life kicks you, beats you down, disappoints you, leaves you for the side of the road. The older you get, uh, life just has a way of taking the dreamer out of you. And um, we think, well, I had this dream or I had this plan, but I didn't do it. Kind of like the video we watched. That guy was supposed to be a missionary to Asia, and he, he didn't do it. You know, he wanted to, but he didn't. And so a lot of times we think that dreaming is a young man or a young woman's game. You know, that's, that's for the young, you know. Friends, that's not what the Bible says. The Bible says dreams, God-made dreams, are for the old and young alike. It says that your old men will have dreams and your young men will see visions. Friends, what I believe the Lord's called me to come here to tell you today is it's time to dream once again. Amen? Has God given you a dream for this body of believers? Talk to your pastor about it. Talk to each other about it. Amen? And the good news is, God's not looking for your ability. If he was, I sure wouldn't be up here talking to you. He's just looking for your availability. He's looking for Isaiah's, and whatever the girl's name for Isaiah is. Here I am. Sent me. Amen? When God gives you a dream, it helps sift all that other stuff. I believe we've all got a promised land in eternity and here and now in the land of the living. And so I just want to encourage you. If God, if you, if you don't have a dream, ask God to give you one. Now that dream's never going to contradict his word. It's going to be for his glory, not your, but that's not to say that you're not going to enjoy it. I love what I do. I love it. And uh, whatever your dream is, you'll love it too. It's, it's time to dream once again. Let's pray. Thanks for joining us today. Until we meet again, remember, you can be recovered.